we talked a little bit about it in Rome, but I just, you know, the Giro was definitely, a, I'll call it an up and down ride for you. You had some really good days. You had some not so good days. Mm-hmm. Kind of what was the takeaway from your Giro experience? Uh, well, you know, everybody seems to want to know why I had some bad days. And you know, the only thing I can think of is I did have a pretty hard crash. Um, it wasn't uh, widely known, probably didn't see it on TV, but uh, it was the day before Cinque Terre time trial and I had one hand on the bars, I was drinking and somebody dropped a full water bottle and it took out my front wheel and I you know, hit the ground uh, pretty hard on my left side and my ribs about a week later were hurting quite a bit. So, you know, I think anytime you crash, especially when you hit the ground uh, with some sort of force like that, it, it takes a little out of you. Okay. You know, and it took a percent or two away from my form, and that's all I was. That's all I was off. So. Okay. But I think the the main thing with the Giro and the idea before the Giro was to do a big race that's uh, that gives you the kind of form you need for the rest of the season. Is considering the Tour de France, and I think that I definitely got uh, a big workload done. And um, once I recovered, I, I feel strong now. So. I think that that was the main goal. Okay. To sort of continue on that point, you definitely feel like you will be better for the tour than you were at the Giro. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Is the tour a better, does the tour suit you better? I think so. Let's explain that a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's differences between the Giro and the Tour and the Vuelta. The Giro, uh, you know, as you, as you can see, the Italians know the course extremely well. and You, you have to know the course very well in the, in the Giro because it's, uh, to put it simply, it's technical. Narrow roads, steep climbs, surprises every day that uh, we don't know about and the Italians know about. It's a very uh, explosive course. You need to be punchy, like DeLuca. Even Menchov has, a, has a, a good acceleration, something that I don't have. The Tour de France is a little bit more of, it's for a diesel like myself, you know, long, steady climbs. The speed is is constant. Not a lot of acceleration, deceleration. Uh, day just you know high speed day after day. Okay, let's talk about uh, the here and now. We're we're here in Aspen. Mm-hmm. Um, what you know? I good can, weather today. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday wasn't so good. Right. I, I can venture a guess, but just tell me a little bit about what what has brought you here to Aspen as opposed to your other favorite training ground in the Kingsbridge Road area in Northern California. Yeah. Well, I, I got to go home for eight, seven or eight days after the Giro and recover, and that was nice. Just taking it easy, hardly riding my bike. Uh, but of course, you know, we need to go to altitude and train. That's the best thing to do. Long climbs, thin air. And Lance has been a great host for us here in Aspen. You want me to stop? Yeah, we can just start that one from the top. Okay. We're on the flight path. Yeah. Okay. What what brought you to answer? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can. So yeah, I got to go home to okay. California uh, after the Giro for a week, and, and it was nice to recover. You know, riding very easy, very short rides, and then, you know, time comes when you got to get back in the groove and start training again, and, and come to a place like Aspen at its altitude with long climbs is is a perfect place and for for lance and chris and myself we're in the u.s we're comfortable lance has been a great host for us here in aspen showing us all the roads uh you know we've got everything we need yeah so it's uh it's a little training camp for us okay definitely nicer for you to be here than in the past you guys have done this kind of thing in europe and this is a a change it is a change i think we're kind of um maybe creating a new path to to the, the grand tours in Europe you know we're we're using races in the US like Tour of the Gila sure uh, having a lot of fun doing it we're here training in Aspen and I think we're relaxed and we're having fun like I said so that's going to translate into uh, better performance okay the Lance has been showing you guys around who's uh, who's been sort of I mean you guys all are probably going good about now is there Anybody giving a little more stick than anybody else? Tell me, talk, take me through uh, a couple of the training rides. No, I think uh, so far we've had the philosophy that we just need to ride right now and mm-hmm. kind of work into it. After the Giro, you know, we've done so much workload that we don't need to 
you know, be pushing ourselves at this moment right now. The, the third week of the tour is very hard, so we haven't, yeah, we haven't come to that yet. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure maybe one or two days. Right. And the weather, it's, you know, been a very interesting, being a Colorado native, this has been a really interesting spring slash yeah. early summer. You guys have been finding your way through the hailstorms and the rainstorms. It seems to be very cool. Now it's getting sunny. I got to put my glasses on. I can't see. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, the, the question that we do over and over again, and I'll, I'll continue to ask it, it'll get, you'll get asked it a hundred times. It's the leadership question on the team. And I, you know, I'll throw it out there. Where do you see it standing? How do you see it shaking out? You know, how um, does... Yeah, you know, I've answered this question about 50 times already. I, I don't really know any other way to answer it than you just have to look at the examples we've set already. Right. Um, Alberto was a great teammate to me in Castiglione. Uh, I was, a, I think, a good teammate to him in the Vuelta last year. Lance was a great teammate to me in California. The Giro, you saw he, a couple times he waited for me. Sure. Um, you know, and that's that's all I can say is, you know, in the past we have been good teammates to each other. I know it's the Tour de France, it's the big prize, but uh, I think that we have too much pride and too much professionalism to go into the race and be divided and lose because of that. Okay. We don't want to see that happen. So is it is it a matter is it simply whoever's best say after that first mountain stage is who everyone's going to ride for? I mean, can we boil it down to that? simple of a definitely i think the you know as the race progresses the the stages and the competition is going to decide but uh i don't think it's as complicated as everyone makes it out to be people are making more making it more complicated than they need to with the leadership question yeah i mean you see these articles uh depending on the news you're reading there's there's always an article about well you know, maybe Alberto considers Levi and Lance his, his rivals. But uh, I think it's always the journalist has a, a story in mind that they want to write. And then they can take the quotes and make it whatever they want. But since we're here on video, I could say that uh, it's not that complicated. For sure, if, if Lance is the strongest guy on the tour and it looks like he can win, no problem for myself, Andreas, Alberto even. I know that the, we're, we're all going to ride to to win the race, and that goes for for whoever, okay, even Can, Alberto or myself. Or so along those lines, this this Astana team. Let's reflect back. The Discovery Channel slash Postal. The edict was always win the tour. Everything else did not matter. Is that the same philosophy this team brings in, or is it maybe maybe like a CSC sort of game plan where they would come in sort of with i maybe say divided interests where they would they'd be interested in the overall but they'd also be hunting stages how do you guys see yourself <clears throat> well and i think the to win the tour the overall classification is the number one goal of of uh, of this team it always has been uh, it would have been last year but as you know what happened we had to we had to change those goals we weren't right. allowed to race so i think that we went out and proved that we deserved to be there and we were the best all year long as far as stage races go and this year, we've already won a lot, but still the big goal is to win the tour. Okay. I'm going to go off on a couple different directions here. We're doing some work with Trek. They're, they've sort of supporting us a little bit on this Velo Center thing. One of the things we're doing is um, a sort of an amorphous story about their engineering prowess. You don't have to necessarily speak directly to that, but if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, the last it's been two years now, three years, two years. On track? Even, yeah. Three. Talk about your experiences working with track and especially their ability to maybe sort of adapt to, to your needs and mm -hmm. kind of just meet your expectations as a, a equipment supplier. Uh, well, you know, I've been professional a long time now on a number of different teams. And I think the relationship that we, this team has with track is by far the best that I've ever experienced. They're, I mean, just today, Ben Coates from Trek was here uh -huh. uh, checking on new bikes that we have. Uh, going over really, you know, all the details with us about handlebars and the cranks, and, you know, how it, everything works with the bike. And I've never, I've never had that before with anyone else. I mean, they really invest a lot into this team. Uh, they listen to our feedback. And I think that Trek has come to the point where they're, they're now um, 
the leaders in, t in uh, innovation and technology. Okay. You're going to see that in the next month for sure. Okay. Yeah, we're apparently going to get a sneak peek next week at some, uh, at some of their new stuff that they're going to roll out at the tour. Mm -hmm. So you've probably already seen it. Let's talk rivals. Um, I'll just give you a name and talk about, you know, maybe what scares you about them as a rival. And we're talking GC here and maybe why you think you guys maybe have a leg up on them or maybe you don't. Yeah. Or you could just talk about them. Let's start with the defending champion, Carlos Soster. Well, Carlos is, uh, he's unpredictable. Some days he's, he's phenomenal. And some days he's, you know, just so-so, uh, you know, not the best time trialist, but can, in one mountain stage, can really explode on the final climb, especially those long, hot, uh, hard days, climb after climb. He seems to really thrive on those days. So he's always an unknown, for sure. Right. How about tactically? He's, I, at least last year, he gained a reputation as being tactically smart because he attacked the arguably the perfect time now you know whether that was luck or tactics or a little of both i don't know but is he a tactically smart rider do you see him as a sort of a cerebral bike racer um well i think that you know the that's a tough question i think uh i wouldn't call him bad tactically i don't know if he's the best out there i mean I, we've seen riders in the past where you can definitely point to the, a certain situation where they really knew what they were doing. Right. Uh, they were clever. You know, I, I, maybe I just don't know Carlos that well, but okay. it doesn't stand out in that way for me. Who's, who's one of these clever riders? I'm just curious. You put that out there. Who's that? Well, I think DeLuca in the Giro was very clever. I yeah. mean, a lot of that goes with knowing the course to, sure. to perfection. But that, that would be a, an example for, my, for me to think of. Okay. Next rider I'll throw out there is a the guy who just won the Giro, a guy who was able to, to best you, at least in the, mm -hmm. at the Giro, is Dennis Menchoff. Yeah, well, he was really impressive in the Giro. Definitely the best rider there. Definitely deserved to win. Uh, actually, tactically, very smart rider. Although I remember last year in the Tour, one of the stages I watched, he, he lost some time because he wasn't paying attention. So, um, you know, that one maybe that's just one day in his career, but... Uh, that I do remember that, but Dennis, you know, he, he put a lot into the Giro, so we'll we'll see. Maybe that, you know, tends to take a take it out of a person. Uh, you know, he's only got a month to recover and, and get going again, so it's a little unknown. But for sure, he's really progressed. I mean, he's won two Vueltas, the Giro now. Definitely one of the best riders in the world, no, no question. Okay. Australian Cadell Evans, a man who was one step ahead of you on the podium last year. Or no, two years two ago. Two years ago, mm -hmm. sorry. Cadell is solid. He's a, he's a diesel, he's like myself. Doesn't have bad days, Has sometimes has a little off day, but even those days uh, he can suffer and, and li really minimize his losses. He can time trial, he can climb. The thing he's lacking is, is a strong team. How much of a difference is that going to make? Oh, it can make the difference for sure between yeah. winning and losing. Uh, I think, you know, last year didn't he take the yellow jersey? And in the end, he was uh, he was definitely tired. You know, the last time trial, I don't think he was top three or top five or even I don't know, but it seemed like it, it took it out of him. Okay. Young Andy Schleck, the the tier, tour, tour hero of the future. Certainly, a lot of potential you see the talent there it's incredible it's when you see him on the bike he's smooth he's he just glides um, not really sure how dedicated he is you know I think he's still young and he uh, maybe he's he's been so talented he's been able to sort of uh, get by with less work than others but I think when it comes to the tour you've got to have the work ethic, the talent, the heart, you got to have it all. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a little too soon. I could eat my words, but <laughs> he's going to always be going up, up up against Alberto in his career because yeah. Alberto's not that much older, and Alberto has the work ethic, the talent, and the heart. Okay. I'm not sure who it's going to be, so I'm just going to say Columbia High Road because 
Rodgers, Kierkin, maybe both of them. Talk about Columbia as an adversary, I guess, in this case. Well, Columbia as a, as, a, as a team is very strong. You know, when you consider that they can win four or five stages just alone with Cavendish. I mean, yeah. he's, he's phenomenal. I can't believe the, the amount of races he wins. Um, for the GC, you know, because they, they have Cavendish and, and a good group to support him, you know, they're, they're not the biggest threat GC-wise, but Rogers is solid. Um, Kirkin, uh, you know, I don't know. He's sort of up and down. Sure. Um, last, uh, I think at one time, a team in a year had a rough Giro, making his comeback at the Tour de Suisse, Christian Vandeveld. Yeah, Christian and I were, I don't think we were ever teammates. Do you ever never cross roads at Postal? I guess he was off to CSC by then. No, we were uh, uh, teammates on Postal. That's yeah. right. That was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, he's he's had a rough, rough obviously Giro, you know, broken ribs and pelvis and uh, whatnot. But I know I know he works hard on his core strength and really rehabilitating himself in these situations. But uh, you know, it's going to be tough. I mean, yeah. he I'm sure he didn't race much before the Giro, considering he was going to do the Giro on the Tour and then only two days at the Giro. You know, he's obviously doing Switzerland now, and he's I'm sure we're not going to see him there. He's just going to use it solely for training, which would be the smart thing to do. Right. So maybe, you know, he might suffer a little in the beginning. Maybe we'll see him stronger at the end. Okay. Just a prediction. Sure. Yeah, that's all it is. Anybody here that you, anybody think I'm missing here? I think. Uh, that's not on our team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there's somebody. Who are we missing? I mean, is uh, you, you know, you got you got the guys that are going to make the race hard, like a Gessink or a Nibali. Uh, um, Kroiziger. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sure there's someone I'm yeah. missing. I'm just Pelizzotti right might now. show up. I you saw him yeah, at the Giro. I don't think he'll be as good as he was in the Giro. That's my guess. Okay. Of those names that we just went through, Sastra, Menchoff, Evans, Andy Schleck, Team Columbia, Christian Vandeveld. What about Frank Schleck? What not, about not Frank the Schleck? Best time trialist, but yeah. definitely there in the mountains. Uh, if he's good, he, he can attack. I mean, everybody attacks if they can, right? But uh, he, he's someone who can who can really explode in the mountains. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I'll say it again. Of those riders, Sastra, Menchoff, Cadell Evans, the Schleck brothers, the collective team Columbia, and Christian Vandeveld, which rider scares the Astana team the most, do you think? Well, I don't like to use the word scares, but uh, I, mean, I would say that Cadell is the, the most solid rider. Okay. Simply because he's consistent, doesn't have really bad days. And he's always going to be there. And if you gain time on him, it's going to be seconds in the time trials in the mountains. So he's, okay. he's probably the number one threat. Okay. Let's go back to your team a little bit and talk about the strengths Lance brings to the table and what conceivably will make him Astana's leader on the road. And then talk about the strengths Alberto brings to the road, what makes him conceivably the leader on the road. And then talk about yourself. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with Lance. Well, I mean, Lance Armstrong, what can you say about him that hasn't been written or said about him already? I mean, he's, he's a special person. He's extremely confident, um, extremely motivated, and he can handle, he has more energy than anyone I know. He can handle, he can just juggle so many balls at once and he can handle the stress and the, and the pressure it takes to win the tour. Obviously, we're having won it seven times more than anyone else. He, he definitely brings the morale up in the team. Everyone is super motivated when he's around. It's, it's just this feeling like, you know, we've got the best here. He's, he makes sure that the team has the best. We have the best equipment, the best staff working for us. Uh, everyone gives 100%, 110% or whatever you want to call it okay. when, they're, when they're around. And, and uh, I think we could, you know, we all knew that he was the best before 
but you tend to f always forget, right? You're only as good as your last race. But if you look at the Giro and consider that's his first Grand Tour in three and a half years or whatever it's been, and to see that he got better throughout the race, it just reminds you that uh, he's a champion and, and he there's a reason why he won seven tours. Okay. And so you can't ever count him out for the Tour de France. I mean, it's hard after listening to that for me to sit here and and think it'll be somebody else besides him, but convince me that it could be Alberto. Okay. Uh, Alberto's young. He's extremely motivated. He obviously has the talent. He won all three Grand Tours in just over a year. I don't think anybody can beat him in the mountains right now. I mean, you know, at this moment, when you look back over the last year, or year and a half, nobody has climbed better than he has. So, um, if he can hold his own in the, in the time trials, especially the honesty time trial, right? Then uh, I don't, I just don't know if anyone can beat him. Okay. Because he, he's just so explosive on the climbs, and he's he's always there, and uh, he just you know, it's tough to beat. Okay. You said no one can beat him in the mountains. The Dauphiné just finished up a couple of days ago. Valverde was able to hold him off at least. Um, explain that and then there's also there's been this idea for put out there that well maybe Alberto is doing Alejandro a favor because maybe he might need a favor down the road well I think first of all uh, Alberto knows that he should not show up at the Dauphiné 100% okay uh, I think it's it has proved disastrous for some people in the past <laughs> to show up at the Dauphiné and, and uh, be able to win that race because you can't carry that through through the Tour de France okay so, you know, considering the spring he had and all the races he won, he was very good. He needed to take a break sure. and use the Dauphiné uh, to, to get back into shape. So extremely smart of him to do that. Okay. And I think that along the way, if he could, you know, if it means he can't win, but he can sort of help a, an al create an ally or, or strengthen an ally that he already has, why not? Okay. And last but not least, yourself. I mean, you're in this equation, whether you like it or not, I think. Yeah, right? well, I guess uh, I would be uh, plan B for the team. Okay. Um, you know, I don't. I haven't won the Tour seven times, obviously. I haven't won all three Grand Tours. But I do think that I'm very consistent, much like Cadell. I don't have bad days. I mean, we saw in the Giro the day I really suffered and I was feeling horrible. You know, I only lost two and a half minutes, right. well, thanks to Lance. But still, I was able to to finish, uh, minimize my losses and still be sixth place, which, you know, I'm sure that disappointed a lot of people, but uh, that's not exactly cracking. So I think that, you know, I'm consistent and I'm always there and, and I can I can strike in the time trials on a good day. Okay. Well, speaking of time trials, I'll let you pick your magazine back up if okay. you want and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start Bell flipping News through. The France Guide. Yeah. This is called product placement. No, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't need to hold it up. Okay. Um, but starting on page 48, we have the, you know, what it's hard to call. We can't really call a prologue. No, 15 and a half kilometers with, you know, 200 meters of climbing. There's going to be some gaps. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how steep the climb is, and I haven't seen it yet, but maybe, maybe it's a little too hard for someone like Cancellara. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong, but obviously he's going well now, so maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> right. But uh, not not so predictable is my point. Okay. When you say there's going to be some gaps, I mean, say... Yes. The, Saster was a name you said, not the best time trialist. We'll say, you know, you or Lance are the best time trialist in this race, over 15.5 kilometers with, uh, what do we say, 300 meters of climbing. How, yeah. What kind of gaps can we open up on a, on a course like that? 40 seconds. Yeah. Roundabout. And how, how many, well, the Giro was won by 41? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Good point. Um, Boy, a stage one doesn't look hard, or stage two doesn't look easy. Yeah, but I think, let's go. Team time trial? Yeah, page 54, TTT. I mean, obviously you guys are, that's going to be, that's going to be fun to watch because there's, you know, at least three and you probably throw a Soxo in the mix called four Columbia Garmin Astana Soxo all yeah. legitimate chances of having a great day and winning that yeah it looks very uh, looks a little technical actually up and down I see a lot of roundabouts 
turns. The team is going to have to work well together. So the one thing that they, they did well, I think, is they shortened the distance. And then uh -huh. they, they did away with that crazy rule they used to have before where first place, you know, second place could only lose 20 seconds. And right. it, it was confusing. And it was because the team time trial was like 55, 60 kilometers. Right. So it was better they made it shorter so the time gaps are less and you just get your real time. Okay. Talk about that, sort of the, okay, who's the, what's the weak link on a team time trial? I mean, is it that fifth guy basically, or you know what? I mean, obviously you yeah. guys are gonna be super strong at the front, but maybe if your fifth guy isn't that strong, then there's, it gets equalized out. Yeah, you need at least probably six, six, hopefully seven guys to really go fast. Uh -huh. And the Giro, we had a great team time trial and we, we didn't really have much of a weak link, but I would say that you know, there were three or four guys who were really strong and could motor the team, and the rest of the guys were strong enough to sort of sustain it. Right. And that's what you need. You, 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 you want to avoid the chaos that comes with uh, one or two really weak links where they're a little bit too proud to admit that they're the weak link, and then and they get in there, and, and then they blow in the middle of the, yeah. of the race or in the middle of the pace line. That's never good. Do those guys take turns, or do they... I mean, does everyone take a turn? Uh, or would you they're get a point? on the limit and they're having their doubts, they shouldn't take a turn. Then. Right. Yeah. How do you guys communicate that to each other? Because that's a decision that needs to be made it fairly comes with quickly. Experience. Yeah. And you know that's why you got to go to the, the Tour de France with an experienced team, your strongest team, and guys who've done team time trials in the past. Uh, you can go, you know, go have a training camp beforehand, but when it comes to race day, it's the experience that counts. Okay. That's the same question I asked about the stage one time trial. What do you, what kind of gaps, you know, say Cervelo, which maybe, you know, mm -hmm. I think Sastra could lose some time here. How much, I mean, I'm picking on Carlos a little bit, but. Yeah. Um, more than a minute. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Minute and a half. And how about to the, you know, I think Schleck, you know, Sox will be strong. They'll be strong. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, if they could beat us. We could beat them. I don't yeah. think you could predict. Right. Predict too much. On and that. Lotto probably the same boat as Cervelo, huh? Yeah, you know, I, to, to go back to Cervelo, I don't. I don't even know if they would be that far off. They're going to have guys like Hushog, who's yeah. a very good team time trialist. So they're a little bit unknown, but I think Lotto will will lose some time. Okay. You know, and that's. That goes back to my point about Cadell having to spend energy. He's going to be spending a lot of energy in, in this team time trial because he's going to want to be that rock that the team tries to hang on. You know, he's going to be the one dictating the pace, taking the long turns, uh, right. upping the speed, and that's never good. This is not a day he'll look forward to. No. All right. We'll skip forward here okay. up into... Uh, could spend some time down in Spain, stage seven, Barcelona to Arcalis. Arcalis, thank you. Can't find it. There uh, we go. Page 60. Long day. Um, yeah, I've done Arcalis a few times. It's, it's a tough climb. Uh, I think probably the, you know, next to Mont Ventoux, the hardest uphill finish we're going to have. Yeah. So, you know, it's important. For sure, it's going to be a day that that uh, some people lose the tour, some people step forward. Okay. Is this the day that at least initial leadership is decided for you guys? Oh, I think it'll become more clear. Yeah. For sure. Um, whether we have one guy still in contention at that point or three, I don't know, but sure, it will become more clear for everybody on all all the teams. No doubt okay. about it. Some ways, for Astana, this could be the most important day of the tour. Mm, well, our goal is to win, so. Okay. Uh, I think maybe the most important day is is Vaughn too. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Tell me a little bit more about the Arcalis climb. Steady, you know, one speed climb, lots of variation. Because that seems like a steady one-speed climb favors maybe a guy like you or, mm -hmm. or even Lance a little more. Whereas the, I like this climb. Yeah. Uh, the one of the reasons I like it is because the the run in for like 30 kilometers before the climb is hard. It's 
you really have to climb to get to the climb. I mean, it's always uphill through Andorra, and there's some pitches of, you know, two or three kilometers that, that's a sustained climb, like a, a steep pitch where you're, you know, in a small chain ring. And then it rolls to the bottom of the real climb. And from, from there to the top is very steady. I'd say the last four, maybe five kilometers is actually not very hard. It lets off a okay. lot. But uh, it's a little bit of altitude there, so people are suffering. And if somebody has the energy, they can jump away quite easily. Okay. Let's keep moving. Now we go to the Alps. Page 78. Yeah. Verbier finish mm -hmm. with a bunch of bumps in between. Never done Verbier, but I hear it's not that hard. Um... Uh, it's not long and it's not very steep. I see that it's 9K, 600 meters, so 6%, 7% at the most. Um, not the most important day. You know, Arcalis and Vontu are, I think, more important, but it is an uphill finish, so okay. you'll see gaps, but I don't think big gaps. So there's some common, you know, the racers make the race and the course makes the race. You, you hear sort of saying the course is going to make the race a little more. Uh, the day to, here to Verbier? Yeah. Well, I mean... Well, it doesn't provide the doesn't stage to for someone to really show that they're the best. You okay. Know, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't gain a lot of time on people. If you're feeling really good, you're having the day of your life... Verbier is not the best day to have that day, you know, you can't, you can't gain minutes. Okay. The following day, we're still in the Alps, stage 16, we'll, I'll call it the double St. Bernard. First the big St. Bernard, then the petite St. Bernard with a downhill finish. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a summit finish, but there's, you know, yeah, it's, you uh, put some gaps on people. It's not a, a long stage, but two very big climbs. You know, I see I see a group at the finish, a group of all the favorites. Maybe one guy gets dropped on the second climb, but uh, not not the day that you're going to see the winner come forward. Okay. How important will that descent be? I mean, we saw, you know, descending at times in the Giro certainly mm -hmm. became, you know, sure, an important yeah. thing. Um, it depends on the road. Yeah. Could be. And then one more day in the Alps. Yeah, that's a tough day. Yeah. It's not an uphill finish, so it's the the final climb is always raced a little differently because of that. But you know, you see uh, five climbs, hard climbs, always up and down. This is a day where you know somebody could potentially go early. Maybe not one of the favorites, but somebody, um, you know, it's later in the race, so things are really more decided by then, but uh, this is a day for someone to, to go on an all, you know, solo day, breakaway, like a Viranc or someone like that. Sure. Tough day. Okay. Really a day that you're looking forward to more than others is the Annecy TT. Yeah. It looks like a pretty straightforward time trial. It's 40K, not as long as we've seen in the past. <clears throat> so the gaps can't be too too outrageous, but uh, you know, I know that road around the lake, it's smooth, it's mostly straight. Right. It looks like we have a little bit of technical downhill there after the climb, or is that the, that's the uphill, sorry. The uphill has some turns in it. Right. Um, yeah. I think it should suit me well. A lot of straight roads where the, you know, your position makes a difference. Okay. What kind of time gaps do you think we see there between the, the important guys? Uh, well, Cadell, myself, Lance, uh, you know, the considered the better time trialists. Uh, Alberto will be okay. Maybe, maybe he doesn't win, but he'll be, you know, still be up there won't will definitely minimize his losses uh someone like sastra or andy schleck um they could lose a couple minutes 
Is this the second most important day of the tour? Or the first, you think? I would say second. Yeah. Then that would make the most important day of the tour two days later, going up Vontu? Yeah. You know, it's the second to last day. People are really tired. Um, you know, people just start to break down. And, and some people are, are, you know, maybe suffered a little bit in the beginning of the race. They came in fresh, and they're getting better as the race goes on. And, and then they can make the difference in, in the last climb here. I mean, it's a tough climb. Right. We, we all know it. It's, it's brutal. It really is. It, it, the picturesque part is up top, but I'll tell you the hardest part is down in the trees okay. before you get up there. Tell me more about that. Why is that the hardest part and well, what makes that climb steeper. brutal? Uh, yeah. There's never any wind there. It's protected by the trees, so it's just a furnace. Uh huh. And uh, it's straight road, so you can see for a long time, and it's, it's tough. It really is. If you're not having a great day, uh, you know, it's torture. It takes forever to get above the tree line right where you can actually feel the wind and cool off and and get a little more draft up there because the climb lets off and there is some wind so you can grab someone's wheel but down below you, it's just every man for himself okay so is the the tour is in doubt until that day definitely yeah definitely i mean if alberto for example comes in to this day with the five minute lead and he looks strong it's not in doubt but uh I don't see that happening. Uh, you, I think that they've intentionally set up the race so that it's always small gaps until we get to Vontu. Right. Arcalis is a is a big a big climb, but it's early in the race, so people are still fresh. The TT is shorter than normal. Verbier is not that hard. Then you have two downhill finishes, which usually see the the favorites come together. So uh, I think they've set it up so that it's close until Mont Ventoux. Is it easier? Because part of me looks at this, you know, there's... No. no, I think it's a misconception just because the gaps are are smaller that it's easier. In some ways, it might make it harder because if you have... Uh, if you wait that long in the race, you still have six guys who still think they can win. It makes for a lot of motivated teams and a lot of motivated bike riders, so it can actually make it harder. If, if it looks like one person is dominating and they're going to win from day six or whatever right teams reassess and go for stage wins and okay breakaways have better chances and i guess i'll ask you last i i know who you think and what team is gonna be on the top how many how many astanas can be on the podium huh well i mean a dream situation would be three but uh <laughs> i don't think that's gonna happen you know we could we could hope for two yeah it's happened before right two years ago will you make a prediction for me who those two could be and maybe what order they'll be in uh no i don't want to make a prediction okay i guess the last thing is anything else we haven't covered here that you'd like to get off your chest tell the world mm, i think we've covered it all <laughs> uh you know outside the tour maybe a few things but what's left for you for this year i mean your, your plan b at the tour you said that so what are your what are your levi's remaining plan a's uh plan what do you mean plan b well you said you are you are the team's plan b oh, at the okay. at the tour okay so what is you know well, there's a lot of time left in 2009 do you have any more plan a's for yourself well i gotta consider what i've already done I've sure won a lot of races uh by the time the tour is over i will have done two grand tours it's a long year, so um, we'll see. To win yeah. Levi's Grand Fondo, perhaps? Oh, I, I can't win it, but uh, <laughs> I'm certainly going to be there and have a lot of fun, for sure. Yeah. Hopefully I will, too. I want to come out and see that. Yeah. Okay. That's cool, man. Are we still rolling?